so my name is Jeff Eiliff. I'm an associate professor at, in the Department of Anesthesiology and Perioperative Medicine at Oregon Health and Science University in Portland, Oregon. So my lab currently works on uh, two pieces. On one hand, we study the cellular biology underlying lymphatic function. So how the brain support cells, astrocytes, interact with blood vessels to underlie lymphatic function, how that process goes wrong in aging and in traumatic brain injury, and how that might lead to neurodegeneration. But then a big part of what our lab does is we're trying to extend that cellular work and the imaging work into human populations. So using human genetics, human histopathological work, and human neuroimaging studies. I think the, the jury's still out on how, whether and how much lymphatic dysfunction underlies Alzheimer's disease. I think there's very strong evidence that su suggests that sleep disruption is linked to the development of Alzheimer's pathology. That, that clinical association is, has become very clear in just the last couple of years. Whether dysfunction of the lymphatic system, which is active mainly during sleep, is a piece of connecting those two things, we think that there's a very strong likelihood that that's true. We see evidence um, in human genetic studies and in human autopsy tissue that suggests that there is lymphatic pathway impairment in people with Alzheimer's pathology and in people with Alzheimer's disease. But how big that contribution might be, I think will remain to be seen. I think some of the two very big challenges that we have. Um, one is, uh, a lack of understanding about the relative contributions of different amyloid clearance pathways. So we know amyloid is cleared across the blood-brain barrier. We know that it's cleared uh, by the lymphatic pathway to the CSF and perhaps out along lymphatic vessels. Um, we know that it's probably cleared in bulk with the CSF and we know that it's locally degraded. We don't have a clear sense of the, how, how important those different pieces are to what parts of the brain in what physiological states and how those go wrong in different levels or in different ways in disease. A second, I think, big problem that we have is, is, a, is a model problem. So most of this work is happening in um, transgenic mouse lines or maybe in rats. And the dynamics of how these systems work may well be very different between what we see in a very large human head, which is about this big, and a mouse brain, which is about this big. And so, Figuring out how what we learn in a mouse relates to what's happening in the humans is a, is a big challenge for us. So I, I think a good answer to that is to look back. So where did we think we would be in five years, five years ago? Would we have anticipated this sudden resurgence? And I think, except for those people who were doing the actual work, the answer was no. And so I think on the one hand, maybe we'll have a better understanding of how these different pathways integrate with one another, but I think it's distinctly possible that in five years, something very new will have happened that will disrupt our way of thinking as much as this last year, five years has disrupted our ways of thinking.